Hey everyone, welcome back to the self-care series. Today I'm here with my good friend and one of our psychiatrists, Dr. Andrea Reed. And I'm, she's gonna introduce herself a little bit more in a minute, but I'm so excited that she'd take the time to kind of hop on here and share. We've had a lot of people share, but she definitely has a different perspective in a lot of different ways because of her background and her education and talk. You know, Andrea, thank you so much for jumping on here. I'm gonna kind of hand it over to you. The one thing I really want you to talk about first is tell us who you are and the type of clients that you love seeing and helping assist. Well, like you said, my name is Dr. Andrea Reed and I'm one of the psychiatrists here at Chanel Family Therapy. I see patients at the North Little Rock, the Jonesboro and the Fort Smith locations, but my main location is um, North Little Rock. I also see folks um, on telemedicine. And so no matter where you are in the state, I can see you if you have um, telemedicine capabilities. I, um, I love patients who are willing to do work. And generally, um, with me, you'll likely be on some type of medicine. That's most, most the reason why people come to see the psychiatrist, but also really engaging in doing some thought work. So working on our thoughts, um, doing some changes in our lifestyle. So the things that we like to do and maybe removing some of the things that may not be so good for us. And then also trying to do things that center and calm us. Um, usually um, I kind of gravitate towards patients who are um, young women, older women. Um, I see a lot of folks with depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorder. Um, I also see quite a few trauma patients. And so I just enjoy being a help to those who are willing to get help. Yeah, that's great. And I'll tell you before I got to put in this plug real quick is that all of my people who see Andrea, whether it's friends, clients, people I just know, acquaintances, everyone loves Dr. Reed because she has the most gentle, non-judgmental, like warm and the cutest office. I'm a little jealous about that, but <laughs> it is, it's really cute. And so I'll throw that in there that she is the most ju non-judgmental, just easy to sit and talk to. You're just such a warm person, Andrea. So anyways, tell us about what you're gonna teach us about today. So today I'd like to talk about medications and sometimes the stigma that can go around medicines, especially during this time of um, physically distancing um, with the coronavirus. Uh, there's greatly um, a need for us to develop coping skills around um, being in a very unprecedented time of having to deal with anxiety and sometimes loneliness and the depression that can um, develop around that. But sometimes coping skills may not be enough and we might need to use a medication that can be helpful with trying to get to a new normal, if that makes sense. Um, most of the folks that I've seen these days have noticed some increased worry. Um, so that worry is usually in the realm of anxiety and also some sleeplessness, um, fatigue, and um, changes in their appetite. And so when we think about all those types of symptoms, they generally will fall in the anxiety category, but they'll also fall, in, fall into the depression category. Um, but what's great is that our antidepressants generally will treat both types of disorders as well as, well as some trauma things as well. Um, medications like Prozac, um, Selexa, Lexapro, or Zoloft, those are usually the ones that some people will um, hear about. They can be very helpful um, during this time. Now, usually they have to be given a little time to work. Uh, I know a lot of us are desiring for a quick fix, and usually there are some medications that can be helpful with that quick fix, but the ones that are best are things like Prozac and um, Selexa. And they have to be taken on a daily basis and you would likely see some results after a few weeks. Um, generally, those results are typically seen by those that are around us. So like the folks in our house might notice that we're not as irritable or snappy towards, uh, uh, <laughs> towards them. Um, we might notice that we're sleeping a little bit better, um, that our appetite is a little bit regulated. We don't have as much GI distress, like stomach bubbles and stuff. And so we'll see those things and we might notice, 
oh, I'm not as anxious as I was, you know, that might take some time for you to kind of have that light bulb to pop on. Um, but seeing those symptoms around depression and anxiety um, are usually what you'll notice first, and then that light bulb will pop on. Um, I know one question that quite a few people worry about is, do I have to be on this medication for forever? Does, is this like a, a life sentence? And no, not, no. I mean, there's only a few things that we have to do in life. And, and being on an antidepressant um, that's, you, you know, that's usually started for a situation such as uh, physically distancing, you don't have to be on this for forever. Um, usually uh, people will be on something for a few months, maybe up to a year, uh, and then you can trend down and stop it. it. It is always a good idea to talk with your doctor about stopping a medication like your antidepressants, so, though, because frequently we'll feel better and we're like, oh, I'm bebopping around. I don't need this medicine anymore. I'm doing it. And then we stop it. And, and then we feel like trash because <laughs> we get the stomach bubbles again. We got headaches we're lashing out at folks and it's because you kind of abruptly stop those medicines so it's always a good idea to talk with your doctor because there's a great chance you'll need to trend down on that dose to get off of it katie what kind of patients um what kind of issues have you noticed your patients having these days that medicines could help with yeah so the two things i've really noticed is First of all, there's been an increase in anxiety and I feel like the majority of people, right? And mm -hmm. so a lot of people, either my ones who are already taking medicine, want to up their medicine because they're spiraling a little. And then the ones who are all either considering it or even ones who have never considered it are now considering it. And so I've seen a lot of that when you it made me laugh when you talk about stopping your medicine, because I see people stopping their medicine for like two reasons. One is because they don't see the minor changes that they're are getting better even though like other people do and so they're like not working right and then the other one is they feel better and they can't attribute it to the medicine like you said so they're like not working <laughs> not need it don't need it don't need it so what do you tell clients like what is one of your go-to sentences if you have one uh when people who are new to medicine or more uh hesitant to take it about this stigma because the one thing i hear constantly i would love to know where this originated it because it honestly drives me crazy i tell people it's pretty fake is they're like i don't want this to follow me my whole life like if you diagnose me with depression and give me medicine this will follow me i don't i don't know where it's going to follow you and who's going to come get all your records but what do you say to people who are stigmatized themselves over taking medication that they might need so I, I like to think about mental illness as very similar to physical illnesses because they all, our brain is part of our body. And so if we think about how some things are just kind of time specific, we break our arm, we might need medication for that brief period of time for that pain. And then we get our arms reset, the pain gradually goes away with the help of medications and maybe some surgery. And sometimes we have an acute event or a very sh uh, brief event of depression or anxiety where we might need a medication for that time. Um, but it's very similar to not needing it for forever, just like you won't need a medicine for your arm for forever. Um, so I, and then when I think about those who have had depression and anxiety and things of that nature for a very long period of time, and there might be a chance that they will be on it for a significant amount of time. Um, I like to think about how that can be similar to being on a medication for your blood pressure or being on a medication for cholesterol or diabetes. Those are types of medications that you have to take on a daily basis in order for you to feel well. Um, and so um, an antidepressant or a medication specific for anxiety would be a medication that you would take in order to feel well. Generally, people will be uh, very concerned about being a zombie or not being themselves when being on medications. And Usually, um, we can pick a medication that won't make you feel like a zombie. There's, um, you will likely be on too much of a medication if you feel that way. I mean, so you, you listen to, I listen to my patients to make sure I choose one that can be in the realm of what they're 
experiencing. Um, and then we target those things. And more times than not, you still feel like yourself just well. Yeah. And so that actually, that was almost like I sent you my next question. It's like you knew it. So then my my last question I can really think of that I hear a lot, and it, it honestly kind of makes me a little sad, is I have some people, and I assume you've seen this too, because you see way more people with like medication issues, obviously, than I do. I just overhear it, um, is they say they feel guilty when a medicine makes them happy because they feel like that's almost a pseudo happiness and it's not real. Do you have any, what do you say to those people? So usually I tell them it is you that take the medication. No one took over your body. You still you. And so it's still your brain. It's still your heart pumping. And so you are happy. It's just that your brain chemistry has regulated and now you're at a level where you can feel better about life and things around life. Yeah. See, oh man, I just, I feel like that message alone needs to be spread so much because I hear so much guilt in people's voice or in not people's voice. People tell me like, I feel guilty. I, my brain should be able to do this by itself and now I'm happy, but it's fake happiness. And I say the same thing. I'm like, How's this fake happiness? Like all this is, is helping your brain heal. The rest is all you. This is your real attitude and the way you're getting to actually function in life because you're healthy. Because your brain is in a good, you know, in a more stable, chemically stable place. Right. And that is one of my goals. Um, a lot, most of my patients are in therapy and it can be a struggle for them to really progress in therapy if there is not a medication on board at times they cannot do the work their brain chemistry is just not at the balance where it needs to be and so they feel guilty like you said um, when they start to take the medication and then they see progression in therapy um, and so i i just tell them that whole spill again if I, this is still you you are doing the work in therapy you are doing the work outside of therapy because that's oftentimes the biggest change that we have to do in ourselves yeah. um, is the work outside of therapy to improve. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I can't thank you enough for, you know, jumping on here and talking to us today. I think it's so important. I will tell everyone out there, Dr. Reed is, she is, in my opinion, the best of the best. She is, takes most major insurances. Once again, I'll leave her contact information down. Um, but she's available literally to the whole state right now. And probably you'll probably keep doing telehealth for a while now that we're doing it. So it's, it's the new normal. Um, I will have a hybrid schedule where I might have a patient who is in, sitting in front of me in the North Little Rock office. And then my next patient might be in Van Buren and I see them on the computer. And that's totally okay. If that what yeah. is, what is needed and is, is helpful, then I'm game for it. Absolutely. I'm with you. That's what my... I think my schedule will look like. And so take advantage of this. You know, I highly recommend Dr. Reed. Once again, I'll, I will write her contact so you guys can call scheduling. But thank you just kind of for talking to us, Dr. Reed, about just the stigma of medicine and helping us deal with that and realize that hard times, some of us just need it. And even in non hard times, I mean, I'm on anxiety medicine. I'm on a, I'm an open book. I'm, yeah. I'm a big believer in therapy and medication because <laughs> I love me. So. Yeah. And you have to treat yourself well. And that's the whole thing is treating ourselves well. Absolutely. Well, thank you again. And everybody, I will see you guys back next week. Have a good week. Bye.